So there are dangers. I, I, I'm well aware of that. I mean, I'm not a fool about this system. You know, I've lived through this system in Africa, in South America, in Europe, Eastern and Western Europe. I've lived in communist countries and capitalist countries. I'm not naive. I don't underestimate capacity of evil in any human being, black or white, because I've been stabbed in the back by black as much as white people, because I know consciousness doesn't have a color. It goes right through the system, because we are all being affected by it in different degrees, okay? So that the point that you have to bear in mind is that there's a practical thing. It's not just a question of strategy. Strategy involves, as I learned, in subverting white consciousness as much as black consciousness. You can get into a system right, right before their face and with all their intention in the world you could go right through them. Because truth is a subversive weapon. It's like, it's like a secret atomic bomb. It blows your head open regardless of all your stratagems and strategies. And this is real. I'm not saying it as an idealistic thing. Yeah, okay, well, yes. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Moors uh, invading uh, Europe. Yes. Speak up, speak up. Go ahead. What, what was the reason uh, that the African did invade Europe when he did? What was, the, what was his reason? Expansionist policy, which is normal human policy. The, the thing that every people who control a large area extends and controls a large area until it's reached the point where it is very difficult now to expand. You can only, ex you can't easily expand territory in the modern world. You can expand trade territory. We can't expand real territory easily. Okay? Because there isn't much territory you can expand in. Okay? But you can expand control territory. Like, like for example, the Americans can expand their control over Nicaragua, but they can't take the actual territory. Okay? So that's normal in the human being. The difference between the European type invasion and African type invasion is that wherever Africans have invaded, they have never taken away the culture or attempted to take away the language or culture of the people. The Moors did not destroy the culture of the Europeans, they enriched it. Whereas the Europeans came, like the conquistadors, and smashed everything they could find, burn all the books, they burnt Alexandria, they burnt the books in America, they burnt the Moorish libraries at Granada, etc. Okay. I understand oh, wow. that. Wow. I just want yeah. to follow up on yeah. The same question, just follow up. Yes. Uh, I understand that. But just for like, I guess for the future, should we should we look at that as being proper and okay to go into other people's territories uh, with the idea that we're not going to change the culture, or is that in case people plan to do a similar thing on us, or to use that as an excuse to say that well, we go into this? Okay, but bear in mind as an answer to that that the Romans had entered Africa. The Romans had already entered and interfered with Africa. Okay, I think that's important. Point. Yeah, okay. Important. Yes, so that, that, yes. Okay, so that in a sense there's a part retaliation there. Okay, thank yeah, you. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, did you hear you say that the first black kingdom uh, was in the Middle East? Yeah, and what we call the Middle East. They, they, we have found a monarchy, not just an ordinary kingdom, but a monarchy which was found at a place called Taseti. It's a place called Kustul, Q-U-S-T-U-L, Kustul in Nubia, which is in Ethiopia, and that is known as Taseti. That is the first monarchy that we know of, okay? It had 12 black kings reign there before the first king reigned in Egypt, the first dynasty in Egypt. All right. Okay. Uh, yes.
Yes, they're taking away money from the UNESCO projects. The, the, the historical project that was begun, for example, in Cairo, money has been taken from that by the United States because they know that that money could be used to rewrite history that is not in their favor. Okay, but respect to the papers to the Sorbonne, I don't know that. Somebody very mysterious called me on the telephone some weeks ago to say that the police had raided Diop's laboratory and his home and seized masses of manuscripts. But he happened to be in the house at the time. I can't call his name because it may get him into trouble. But um, he told me that the police did not take any of the historical material that they took um, political stuff and that he has got material, he has smuggled out of Senegal material that could make at least six new books, six posthumous books by Diop and that when the time is right he will get in touch with me. I haven't heard from him since. This happened about um, six weeks to two months ago and I know the person who it is who is a very very close friend of Diop but I don't know what is happening there, but I know the police have seized political stuff, but they haven't touched the historical stuff because they don't think that it really concerns them. Yes. Uh, it appears that uh, only third world countries are in conflict with one another. Uh, since World War II, there have been no given arguments between European countries, but they're not fighting with them. Uh, and it appears that, is it the, uh, do you feel like we're being manipulated by the European powers? Because uh, only third world countries can be in conflict with one another. They're killing one another, not to the aid of the South America. Is that? So it's a highly unsettled state. You see, Africa is in volcanic ferment. The volcanic ferment in Europe ended quite a while ago. Um, the wars, for example, destroyed millions of Europeans. Hence, those things exploded. Europe was in extreme conflict with each other um, until recent times. Even in my boyhood, Europeans killed each other by the millions. In my boyhood. So there's not... Been, well, since World War II, yes, because, I mean, A, Europe has learned a bit of lesson. B, um, Europe does not have the energy um, for such kinds of conflict. There are conflicts, but they don't have to end up in actual going to war against each other. In Africa, you have a highly unsettled state because those are not, tr many of those things are not true African nations. The upper shown that, you see, Europe has split Africa up in such a way that you have a you have all sorts of imbalances. That's why the UP has pointed out that it is absolutely necessary to have federated states, a set of federated states rather than these mini states which are anachronistic. How that is going to be done without great leaders like the UP, I don't know. But that is responsible. It's like having a split in the earth. The thing is shaking all the time. And of course, there is manipulation behind it, I am sure. Yeah, could you finally give your final question because I must leave. Okay. I was wondering, uh, I enjoyed this okay. question, by the way. Um, the textbooks that our kids use in the high school, the companies and the authors of these textbooks, how can you have some of your writings, or can you get with these people to have, you know, the textbooks uh, be written? So that they are more, you know, accurately, um, That's what one is trying to do, but I can't do it on my own. I don't have, I remember on the plane, I was on a military plane drive, taking me to um, Andrews Air Force Base and on to Kennedy Space Center in 1983. Only very few blacks were invited on that plane because I was going to witness the blast off of the space shuttle. I met a black woman. She is in a very powerful position on the school board. You know what she said to me? I saw you give a complimentary copy of Blacks and Science to the Deputy Administration of NASA, who is a black man, by the way. You didn't give me a complimentary copy. I said, I'm sorry, but I can't just give away free copies. This is a one-man business. She said, well, I'm not going to help you get your books as textbooks on the school. You don't say anything to me anymore. I mean, you see, that's what I'm telling you, I me. Mean, I don't want to end on a sour note, but you see, people have to do this. You, you, one person can't do that. I have a hell of a time making the books. 
I can't determine educational policy. I don't even, I can't even do that at Rutgers. I mean, I, I am grateful enough that Rutgers leaves me alone. I, I, I was in a, in a tremendous fight in this country in 1978. The United States, after I'd been here for nine years, the United States would not allow me to remain in the United States. I went, I went on a trip, and when I, when I was stranded in England, the United States says that I cannot return to the United States. A professor, you know. And I've been here all these years. They have guys who come in here yesterday and they're permanent residents. They refused me permit to come into the United States. Somebody at a high level in Washington had to intervene. I don't know who the hell he is. Some unknown friend of mine had to intervene at the highest level for me to come back into the United States. For four years, I was forbidden to leave the United States without a fingerprint and a photograph, like they, they said, when I went to Trinidad, they stamped my passport on parole, like a prisoner, like a criminal. So, I mean, well, because there, there were things that they, they, they felt that they had to go back into my past, they had to check me out, did something seem wrong about me, they had to go back. Eventually, I was put on the deportation list. I only escaped deportation from this country because I had adopted a son and my lawyer was able to argue that separation from the American citizen. In the same way that happened with Lennon and his wife. His wife was allowed to stay, but Lennon was told he had to go. And eventually, the child determined the issue. They said because he's the father of an American child, it is cruel and unusual punishment to separate the father from the child. That is how I was allowed to remain in the United States. So, but, but, I mean, I mean, so that, I mean, how could I, how could I, in a situation like that, not even being a citizen, actually arrested because I'm entering the astrophysical laboratory because foreigners are not allowed, I'm considered a foreigner. How could I determine the educational system of the United States? I can do what I'm doing in Portland. I'm also doing that in Philadelphia. These things I could do bit by bit, but without black people out there who have that power, who are in that system, can come and say, look, here's a book. Let me represent it. I am not a million people. I can't walk with my little feet all over the United States showing my book. Other people have to do that. They have to become part of it. It's not one machine. Everybody have to become involved. This is a crusade. You know what it means to your children. I know the horror for my own child. When he was four years old, he came crying to me because somebody said he was black. He said, Daddy, you know I am white. I said, but how could you white? Look at me. I am not white. He said, you're of a different kind. I have to be white. I know what he was saying, the poor fellow knows that in that system, if he's not white, he's going to be blown to smithereens. I had to teach him history. I had, that was the first time I knew that now he was four years old, he learned enough about the society for me to start pumping this thing into him. Until a year later, he was proud to be a black prince. Okay, but if that is happening to your own children, you must be know what, what a monster out there is eating up our children. We have all be to become involved in this crusade. Can be left to the person who is putting out that knowledge. I'm drawing that from all over the world. That in itself is a duty and a task. I can't determine the educational system of this country. I can determine the new ideas, but that has to come from a body of people around us. Okay, I must. Okay, thank you. Again, uh, thank you for coming. We have both over there for sale. There's some more food outside. Please support the food sale so that uh, the sister doesn't have to eat the food herself. And thank you again for coming to, to the theater. The tapes of today's lecture will be on sale. If you want to pick up tapes, they'll be right here. You can go to the research center and... Uh,